special guests. But this one is really close to my heart because it's probably why I'm doing the podcast today. So without further ado, Jason Stevens, please take the floor. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, Steve. My name is Jason Stevens. What more do you want? <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Go on. No, no, seriously. Yeah, no, pleasure to be invited on today, Steve. Um, it's always good to speak to you. Um, God, I'll tell you about myself. Blimey. Um, well, tell us how you got in. Tell us about yourself and tell us how you got into sports because it's a fascinating story. But have in mind, we've got a lot to get through. I've got quite a few questions for you. Yeah, so, I mean, how did you get involved in professional sport? I think, um, you know what, it's without pulling one heartstrings out there, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but going through my upbringing, unfortunately, I lost my mum and dad when I was young, and therefore, I tended to click onto social circles, which were Back then, we was allowed to play outside all hours of the day, and the group of people I was hanging around with were sport mad, and you just grew up in that circle. So that was my release, getting away from foster life, life of parents who I didn't have. Um, brothers and sisters were separated, so I really did cling on to my group of friends. And we was all football mad, sport mad, and, um, yeah, it was embedded into me. So I grew up there. And and you, I'm I'm going to drop it. You you were a football player. Uh, you played against Newcastle, right? In the, it was quite far in the in the FA Cup, right? Well, blimey, that was a long time ago. I wouldn't say I was a footballer, but yeah, I did put some boots on the You wouldn't have thought that in the game that you were mentioning, the FA Cup it was a third round game. Um, I played for Stevens at the time, yeah, and uh, yeah, I got um. Skin, should I say, <laughs> quite early on. But yeah, we managed to do all right. We managed to get a replay in the first game. And then the second game, St. James's Park, narrowly lost. But I didn't play in that one because I hurt myself before that. But it was a good experience. The rounds before there where we played Swindon and Cambridge. Um, it was a mix of environments. I'll never forget the one that um, Swindon, it was like the windiest game ever. And it was a game of two halves. But two halves literally in a penalty area. And... It was a real record, I think, for the amount of shots on goal for both teams in each half of football. But somehow we managed to nick it one. So that was a, an interesting game. But yeah, yeah. played in 25. And, yeah. and who was it that was playing as well on that day? Was it Alan Shearer or something? Yeah, well, the Newcastle guys. You had all the legends out with that one. That's when Newcastle was obviously in the prime. So it was a yeah, pleasure to be on the peak. I wouldn't say I was marketing or anything like that. But it was a pleasure to be on the same peak. Yeah. That was that must have been a hell of an experience. Um, it was just a football game, of course. Listen, when I say it's just a football game, um, what I mean is obviously it's nice to put yourself and test yourself against the superstars. Um, but for me, it was just a, a normal football game. Um, yeah, you know, just the thing when you're on playing against players of a higher standard is just not to embarrass yourself. Um, I managed to do that quite well. Yeah, brilliant. Um, you epitomise what we try to do, what what we try to kind of bring to the bring a spotlight on, and that's people making a difference. And and it's it it is a privilege to have you on today because I know what what our, our story. But I just want to let people know so at the moment. Um, tell us a bit about what the position you've got within um, UCFB um, at Wembley Stadium and what you're doing with hashtag United. Yeah, I mean obviously the. We're the latest stage of my journey in life and career. So recently in 2018, I managed to um, get an opportunity to work in the UCFB at Wembley Stadium on the International Football Business Programme. So there's a degree, um, post, so undergraduate degree in International Football Business. So I lead in some of the modules across all the years there. Um, with that, we try to make it as practical as possible and try and get them into experiences from international football clubs. So one of my remits is to make partnerships and experiences with the outside professional game. So as you know, you helped us organise a trip into Qatar to have a look at the World Cup 2022. And that was you know, a memorable experience for the guys back in I think it was January 2019. So that was a really good one. <laughs> And um, unfortunately, we just had some trips um, postponed, but we were going to Benfica and some clubs in Holland as well. Um, but hopefully we can put them back in. Um, so we try to inspire children and give them the knowledge to you know, be able to what should I say, undertake roles in the professional landscape as it is today from the UCFB front. Um, on the hashtag front, it's a recent merger with my ladies football team. Um, it's come about through 
good timing and opportunity really more than being a superstar and making something happen um you know i got involved with afc basildon who were formerly known as cnk basildon all in the space of like 12 months so when i got involved they were cnk basildon um they were going through a tough time the team just got relegated the guys that picked up the reins of the club were new to the game themselves um and Back in 2019, we had a choice. Do we merge with a local football team or do we try and make the product a little bit stronger on and off the pitch? Um, we managed to keep the product and try and make it stronger on and off the pitch and to see what our opportunities would be this year. Um, and I managed to get it right on the pitch a little bit and the guys definitely got it right off the pitch. And um, 12 months later, we picked up a tweet by Hashtag United who were looking for women team a women's team to merge with. And it was funny, in the space of like three or four days, we had three or four opportunities where people were reaching out. Um, Spencer Aaron, the guy, the founder of um, Hashtag United, he, he said to us that there was about 113 different clubs that were interested. We was the first one we met. Um, from our perspective, he was the first one we met. And by the end of that meeting, it was all agreed. Um, we were inspired by each other that this merger made sense between both parties. So good timing, opportunity, um, and a little bit of work that went in between that. You've had some huge successes with ladies' teams, right? It, it's like you're under, I, I, I can't remember all the competitions that you've won, but you, you trained the, um, the under um, 16s, right? West Ham team. And you yeah, won everything. We did, yeah. I mean, just to give a bit of perspective, perspective on that. I mean, West Ham at the time, they wasn't under the arm of the West Ham brand. So it was like a franchise. We were buying into them through kit, through hire of facilities and we were basically leasing the name of them. But at that time, um, yeah, so we're playing in the local county leagues and, um, and there was a national cup competition as well. And yeah, we'd won all the trophies. So we were pretty, pretty pleased with ourselves at under 16s. Um, Unfortunately, it didn't quite work out there because West Ham didn't want an under-18s team. They wanted us as an under-16s to stay another season. It just wasn't practical for their development. So we decided to break away from them and form our own under-18s team. And it proved justifiable because, again, even though they, were, they had, well, potentially three years in the under-18s, they won the treble again in the under-18s in their first year. So, yeah... <laughs> Now they're into senior football, and a lot of them are with me, AFC Basildon, and um, now soon to be hashtag as well. So, you yeah. love being the underdog. You love being the underdog, Jason. What is it with you? <laughs> I think um, it's not love being the underdog. I like the challenge. I do like the <laughs> challenge of um, seeing how far you can develop people, develop teams, and and so yes, yeah, seeing where you know how how you can improve more as an individual, as a, a collective. So. Yeah, I love that side of it. It's easy to walk into, I'd say, easier to walk into elite setups and bounce off the success that they already got. I think it's a lot harder to make something worthwhile, you know? So I enjoy that challenge as well. Okay, can you remember when we first met? I think it was a, I remember it was a phone call, um, and then I invited you up to one of our street soccer events I was running up at Manchester United Foundation, that's our Old Trafford Stadium. And I was tongue in cheek, I didn't expect you to turn up, to be honest. I'm, I was surprised you turned up. <laughs> but but what, a, what, a, what, a, what a difference that made, because it was, we, I, I came up to Manchester United and, and I was in awe, really. You were getting all your kit, the, the kits out, the, the, um, the, the, the arenas, the sport, the uh, football arenas, and you were getting ready. And I'm, I'm just looking up at Bill, is it Bill, um, who is it, the one that's outside the, the, the statue, the big statue outside of, um, uh, Manchester United, and I'm thinking, is this really happening? This is surreal. It's like, what, what, what am I doing here? And there you were playing your five, uh, your um, street soccer um, event, and you were doing competitions of of all the different types of ages, which was unbelievable. I just loved every second of it, and that was where our journey began, right? Yeah, it did. Um, you know, was, I think that was the second time we'd done that. The first time we'd done it, it was, um, it was a friend of mine, Darren Labour, who run international street soccer. Unfortunately, he was in America at the time and he asked me to stand in for him. Um, and then we went up to Old Trafford and we won this um, street soccer competition. Um, put a little bit of a twist on it, our own little twist on it. And then we got invited back um, every couple of years from then to run it. And what was really good about that project specifically because you had some of the academy boys playing street soccer, 
but they mixed it with some of the street projects. So they got a street shred project and um, the boys were coming together. I'm going to pay three and three. And it would always be the street teams that would end up getting to the finals. Um, so that was a, a really good insight. And just brought everyone together, the club, the community, etc. as well. So, yeah, I love, I love those little events. They're really good. And it, it then followed on to our experience because we, we brought it Qatar, to Qatar and we had a wonderful, wonderful time. And we're still having a wonderful, wonderful time with it. Um, we're still playing it, um, fan zones, at the, the big um, uh, football competitions here. So we're outside the stadiums. You've been with us on those events. Um, yeah. we, we took it from nowhere and we were having, oh, can you, can you just remember the things that we were doing at Mia Park? It was just incredible. I think, you know, the whole of the, well, I say Qatar has embraced it. Whatever project we've done, whether that's through like general recreational, um, outside in the parks, whether it's been into some of the labour camps, and whether it's been into outside the stadium supporting the QSL events or the Qatar FA, you know, it's been embraced everywhere we go. I mean, the Mere Park ones, um, which was really good, is because. You know, we've done a little bit of research and what was it? In one weekend, we had 67 different nationalities. We had queues, queues with, you know, in today's world, <laughs> man. And we were playing and about, at two o'clock in the morning. And, uh, <laughs> and it was still two o'clock in the morning. And, yeah. and literally, there was sometimes there was 177. We, we'd done that also. Which we, we kind of, we counted everybody that was standing around one pitch, Jason. And exactly. there was 177 p people we thought was around the pitch. As like I said, they, you know, just the way that, the style that we developed, it was just the way that it just enabled different cultures to mix. Football's a universal language. And, um, you know, as long as we can bridge them and become, as I say, just become receptive to the idea of playing a game. There's no interference. Music's the dictator. Let them play, let them be creative, and uh, we just manage it. And, yeah. Can you remember? And he's going to love it because I'm going to WhatsApp him after this, but I'm going to tell him to li listen. But Abdul Rahman, remember that guy that, that came along that was really, really big when it first started? And he oh, just kept man. on coming. Sorry? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was really good because he suffered from diabetes as well, didn't it? So, and the one thing that we, when I designed the style of Street Soccer, was that. It's very, actually very friendly for people with diabetes because it's short, short games with high tempo, and um, you can play repetitive games either back to back or you can, you know, put intermittent in there. Um, and it really helped him. And he, he really, like I say, latched onto it. And yeah, God, he was our number one customer in the end. He was there constantly, oh. wasn't he? Yeah, he couldn't even play one three to four minute game, could he? And yeah. then by the end of it, he's playing eight. It was yeah. just incredible. And he lost, I think it was 10 kilos in, in oh. such a short space of time. Uh, his feet, his feet really, I mean, I remember just watching how he first come on and he was a little bit what we call heavy touched and the ball was constantly flying out. And then by the end of it, he was like twinkle toes. He was doing the old drag backs, the old quad turns. It was yeah, really good, really good change of direction, good tempo, good anticipation. And that's what you want. You want to try and, you know, listen, if there's a, a technical side to it, they're the sort of attributes you want to see players develop. But socially, it was good because he was making lots of friends as well. People were recognising him. And, yeah, and I think that made him feel good as well. So that was good. And and I can, I can remember that, that I've had um, meetings afterwards where, remember the French guy in Belgium, I think it was, well, not French, sorry, the Belgium guy that was doing the five-a-side type thing foot sale yeah, no, and think, um, um he's now doing street soccer yeah yeah he, he, i mean obviously we inspired him to take it back and he's got a company in france i well, don't know the exact name of it but it's like foot sale one or something and he does mingle with some of the world's elite players for his academies but yeah he adopted the street soccer philosophy out there he loved it all into it he was constant contact with me and um we helped set up a few um academies for him but not me going over there but just giving him the material to do it and uh, yeah now he's off and running you often see it on his post street soccer's out and he's playing and stuff like that so nice to inspire yeah, people yeah. yeah and we're still and from our side we're still pushing forward for it we're still kind of knocking away at these events and going to schools and colleges and and we're hoping to have a um uh, 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 kind of fitness, uh, community fitness program where we can play street soccer and we can do other activities. So there's so many things that we're still doing. But what I'm going to do is, is what happened with you from there is all of a sudden you go from Qatar 
and because it was coming into the summer period and then you went to um, the Cook Islands and became the, the fitness and uh, conditioning coach. Yeah, Dan, I was a, a strange one. I mean, obviously we was in Qatar first, but actually the Cook Islands school we started off uh, a couple of years before that. Um, it was on a bit of a round the world holiday with uh, the family and um, on the way to get married to my lovely wife. And, um, <laughs> And we, uh, so we was on the Cook Island, cycling around the island one day, come across the Football Association, suddenly watching some men play football um, at their headquarters. There was this guy standing next to me. I didn't think for one minute he was who he was. Um, started talking to him. Probably, to be honest, I was moaning about the style of coaching the football. And I just found out that he was the men's <laughs> national team and they were qualifying for the World Cup. And I'm thinking, what he's teaching there is pulling up bog standard what we do in England for 11, 12 year olds. No wonder you don't really get past the first qualifying round if that's what's happening. And I was speaking to this guy and he said, um, <laughs> why don't you go out get out there and tell him what to do? And I thought, what? Is he serious? And he was like, yeah, get out there, tell him, tell him, just tell him Lee said, go out there. And I was a little bit reluctant and the wife went, look, you had all talk, get out there and do it. So I was like, oh God, now they're both telling me. So I walked across to the pitch, honestly. I looked at this guy who was their coach at the time and uh, I just said to him, uh, hello, I know him now, but I didn't know him at the time. And I said, um, that man over there, Lee, told me to take the session. And he didn't even hesitate. He just like bowed and walked off backwards. And suddenly the guys were all looking at me and it was like, okay, well, uh, we'll deliver now. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> you know, and that in itself was an experience, you know, trying to get instant recognition, adapting to the culture, and providing something that they could engage with straight away. So I had about a, a probably about a 30 minute session with them. And um, by the end of it, the guy who I originally encouraged me to go over there, Lee, I went back to talk to him. And he went, oh, I'm the president of uh, the Islands Football Association. I'd like to offer you a job here. And he was like, um, can you lead the team to the World Cup qualifier? And I was like, well, when is it? He went, for well, two weeks time. And I was like, well, I can't because I'm getting married in Fiji literally in 10 days and he was like well, cancel the wedding and he was like yeah i'll organize it for you and you know whilst probably listening but we did seriously consider canceling it but it was just that we had some friends um coming out from england and we couldn't really cancel it just for football but we stayed in contact and then a, you know, a year or so later i went out there was first of all strength and conditioning officer but also head coach for the women's and then within a couple of months, I've made technical director for the whole association. So, loved it out there. It was only short and brief, but um, yeah, great experience. And, and, funny experience and, really. and, and this, takes you, this takes you to your next part of your journey. My journey also was when you went to UCFB. Yeah, I mean, it was, um, you know, circumstances out in the Cook Islands where some of the children just didn't settle. I mean, it really was a thing. As much as it was beautiful paradise, it was so laid back. It was a another level. Um, and you know <clears throat> what they call work is one and a half hours a day. And um, unfortunately, it was one of those things. I was just not accustomed to working so minimal in a day. You know, it was just hard to adjust. <laughs> and uh, you know, look at how life is in Qatar, how life is in England. Um, yeah, I did find it hard to adapt. The kids found it hard to adapt. Um, and yeah, so in the end, we decided to see if there's any opportunities in England. And one come up at UCFB over the um, Skype interview with the bosses there, and yeah, offered me a job. So on a plane back to England, and 2018, we uh, started at UCFB. Yeah. And that's just I, I remember because we then started talking about bringing some students to into Qatar so that we could we could do two things we could come in let them experience for themselves what type of things that Qatar was doing from a sporting perspective, but we wanted to kind of we wanted to hopefully create good news from um, from how Qatar was embracing sports and how that what they were doing to try and um, take on the World Cup let's say. Um, and and it was it because we there was there was bad press back in the UK with the papers, so it was for it was just to give them an experience to experience from themselves instead of listen to media. Yeah, I mean, Steve, again, you know, you're spot on there. There's so many things wrong at times with the media, and obviously they, they focus on one or two things, twist it, and then suddenly it's so influential that a lot of people back in the UK were believing it without actually experiencing it, and that leads on to why I wanted to set up that trip in Qatar. Not only was it a focal point for the World Cup in 2022, 
who was also a point was actually guys. Because you know, the first thing I'll do to the students is ask them for their perception of the time. And obviously the media didn't give their answers. So when we all had a chance to organise a trip to Qatar, it was great to check the kind of perspectives. And, um, you know, when we brought those, I think it was 22 students out, um, a lot of them, I think one of the first questions we had was, you know, what's your perception of Qatar? And there wasn't too many people that was, you know, singing praises. Some of them were open-minded, but some of them were swayed by the negative attention, as you outlined. So by the end of that week, though, Steve, we changed them. Dear me. And I've got some notes down here. We created something like 40,000 40, likes, shares, um, follows. 50,000. 50, 50, it was yeah. incredible. It was just absolutely brilliant. And we got so much participation from everybody here in Qatar, the Supreme Committee, the Tourism Authority, um, Aspire Academy. It was just like there was just so many people that were trying to help us and it just went down yeah. so well. And so, and it was it was a combination of it was just fantastic. Steve, I can't you know to try and say what Qatar did for those group of students. Um, listen, this is not a sales act, by the way, um, for the trip. Um, this is just my honest my honest um, understanding of everything that went on. But uh, I've been fortunate enough. I've, I've experienced football in a number of different continents and. And a lot of times you're met with resentment and you have to try and prove yourself before, you know, you get an opportunity to even do something. One thing I loved about Qatar was how receptive they were to all ideas. And, um, you know, what? even the people at the top, and that was the bit that impressed me. They took time out of their day to come and speak to the students just to try and let them know what they're actually doing. And that was the well factor of that trip, you know. Gordon Penny, one guy. I mean, that speech he gave on the Supreme Legacy Committee um, leadership. Oh, that was David Mitch Weber. That was um, inspirational. That one. So, it yeah, was funny. I'm was. in tears on that one. So, what a great character he was. But again, the Tartars and Association, how good they were. The guys at Aspire Academy. I mean, and then it was all the, the potential. Oh, you should have done this. We should have done that. And when we looked at it, we thought, blimey, next year we will do this and we will do that. But unfortunately, um, COVID, unfortunately, has put a stop to that in a moment. But we definitely will open those ties again and hopefully bring more people out to um, see the real Qatar. You know. We're definitely, we're already in process to try and make it um, uh, have something academical when we come out here so that there's some 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 stuff that they can participate in, like a like a startup or, or solving a problem that, that there's potentially here so that they can they can use their skills that they're learning from the university and bring them and, and try to to um, work that problem out. Mujib, I'm, I'm watching. <laughs> Thanks for listening, my friend. Thank you so much. Yeah, so it was, and, and for me, let me just, well, we've just talked about several things there, but, but for me, it was when um, uh, Stefan uh, Lindbergh from Ginger Camel, he was the one that, that noticed all these things that we were doing from a sporting perspective, whether it was the street soccer or whether it was the, the, the UCFB. And he was the one that, that called me to his office. I didn't know what he was going to call me to his office for. And it was a case of saying, would you like to do a sports podcast? And I was like, uh, I'm not really sure. <laughs> am, am, I, am I good at it? Could I be good at it? He said, you'll be a natural, just carry on. And and the rest of it, a year later, I, I've loved every second of it. And, and it, it is about stories, Jason. And I'm just so privileged to have, have known a lot of your stories. And that goes on to me. Uh, I'll, go, I'll go on a, a, another thing which 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 I want to touch on. Is it that you give so much of your time and effort? This is we've mentioned just a few things, but you're kind of you do. Um, you've got your own Aspire Academy back in the UK, right? Hello, Jason. Jason's left us. He's, he's froze. Let me carry on. Jason, um, Jason's got his own Aspire Academy. Um, let me just tell him if he could hear me is just try and come back in on the same login, Jason, and you should be able to uh, get back in. But Jason, from um, from he's worked in so many different areas. He's at had, um, had times with AC Milan, um, 49ers um, uh, over in America. He's been to um, Brazil. He's all about giving back. And this is this epitomizes everything that that I, and this is why he's such a big inspiration to me personally, is for the simple reason that he gives so much to to other people. And it's not just that; it's his family. His family. He's 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 a family man through and through. Um, he's got two daughters. One aged. Um, I just got to check. One aged two and one aged seven. And what they're doing in gymnastics is incredible. They're being they're already being scouted at 
that very early age to be some some um, special people when it comes to gymnastics for the for uh, Great Britain. So again, on all levels that Jason gets involved with, whether that's his students with the lecturing, whether it's now this um, hashtag Women's United, which again I don't know um, a lot of people would would um, uh, wouldn't have heard about it. But he really thinks that the ladies' game, and, and so, so we, all, we all should, the ladies' game is just as important as the men's game. And he puts so much effort and time into that to bring this, this talent um, along and where he brings teams together. And a little story. Um, we did this. Um, we did this UCFB to, to Qatar. It was very funny. I got to say, it was it was quite funny because I didn't know either. And I swear, even though that I know that some of the guys are, are listening to it now, that was on the trip. Um, I organised a, a game with um, with Qatar University, which was very kind. We had a big lecture from um, uh, Dr. Mafood, and we also had an um, organised team. It was a football match, and I don't know for anybody that lives in Qatar. I don't know if you've ever been to the stadium at Qatar University. Basically, there's a um, there's a stadium, and it really is a proper stadium. It's it's a proper stadium, um, and what we, we had to do is is guess what we were doing was we had to walk up this all of us had to walk up these stairs and it was coming to a crest and it, there was it was quite a few steps to get to the top and when we got to the top we looked down onto the football pitch and i'm not joking it was their first team it was qatar's university's first team they were all dressed impeccably they had their um they had their um full uniform kit on it was so impressive And and um, with the UCFB guys, um, they were all different shapes and sizes, um, and it was a case of all different shapes and sizes, and they were all coming for a game. And Jason, within minutes, within minutes, he'd done a team talk. He was getting them fired up on the the the, the, the lineup, and he was telling them, "Hey, listen, I don't care if you win, if you lose, ten nil." You just go out there and you just make a name for yourself. And I'll tell you to this day, that team was very professional. I've got to say, they were fantastic. But Jason's team, he brought them together in such a short space of time. And they beat, they got beat by 1-0. And it was unlucky that they got beat by 1-0. And that's what it takes when it comes to somebody pulling a team together, bringing the right, putting your, knowing the, team, the members to put your arm around and say, come on, you can do better. St kind of getting the other one with a bit sharp, short, sharp talk to somebody to get them going. Jason done that. And I will never, ever forget it. For all my life, I would never forget that game because the coach on the other side was going absolutely crazy. He had a um, he had a he um, had uh, one of those wooden things that you write on. He was banging it on the floor. He was frustrated. He didn't know how to break Jason's team down. But Jason was from a tactical position. You just make sure that you've got your team in place, Jason. Can you remember? It was so funny, right? Yeah, sorry, man. I don't know. I'm with... Um, yeah back on but um yeah going on to that game it was certainly unexpected I mean no one expected that in the group and it was thrown upon us when well when we I remember walking over the steps of the stadium some of these people oh, were yeah. all in the kit and I thought oh the game going on who who's who's playing and they were like well they're playing you <laughs> what do you mean and that was funny yeah, because we had to get them all the guys the kids were up for it even though it was you know whatever it was none of them were footballers three one or two one or two That was it. Yeah, and yeah. Um, yeah, we just got them organised. Um, they played for played from memory, and um, yeah, he was. He, he didn't. I mean, listen, it was very sporting. They were very um, respectful, and um, yeah, yeah. But you can tell that <laughs> we upset him there. What was he? National National University champions or something? Um, for six I years in a row. No, and, he wasn't uh, happy. No, yeah. But again, the kids he always remind me because there was one moment in that game. Whether I made a, I went to make a tackle. I was nowhere near the guy. I was about three hours away from him. And someone got it on video. And the amount of time yeah, they changed yeah. Facebook in front of me. And all I did oh, try to do dear. was put him off. And I, thought, I did it. But um, yeah, as for one of those funny moments in football, I think I slid from about 20 yards away. 
But he had to go around me because of my size. He had to go around me anyway, so it changed his direction. <laughs> Jason, <laughs> I, I, I kind of, I just didn't want to laugh. I was like, I was, I was trying to kick myself, pinch myself, not for laughing when it when it all yeah. happened. And I was thinking, don't laugh. I don't know how he's going to take it. He's going to go. Is he going to go mad afterwards? It was, <laughs> it was just hilarious. But the uh, one for me as well, the uh, guy. What was his name? The one that was in goal. He pulled off some of the best saves I've seen in my life. He was brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, was it Adam? No, Adam was the guy that got sent off. We had a guy that got sent off as well, don't forget. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he sent us off. <laughs> this, uh, I mean, down to 10 men as well. Um, yeah, I was trying to think. I can picture him, picture him. Oh, no, forgive me. I can't think. But yes, you're right. Bradley. Sorry, it's Bradley. Bradley was in goal. Bradley Smith. Bradley, and, uh, Bradley, yes. yeah, and he, yeah, he did. He made some. He, Incredible save, really. Again, just throwing him in. For someone that doesn't really play goalkeeper, we, um, we lived his moment there, that was for sure. Yeah. But oh, that was incredible. And the, guy that, the guy that was his birthday the other day, the guy that got sent off, and I, I sent him a red card just to remind him. We haven't forgotten. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jason, I know that we're going to be running out of time soon, but this has been amazing. What I wanted to do was I just tried to touch on your daughters. What level at your daughters, the two-year-old and the seven-year-old, what levels are they at at gymnastics as of now? Uh, it's, 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 they're young, as you just highlighted, two and seven. So, But they're, they're at the um, well, you know, highest level they can be um, in their respective club. So... Um, yeah, just um, watch this space. There's so many years, so many hours, so many things that could go wrong, could go right. But they're definitely in a good place at the moment. Um, they've got a dedicated mum, and they've got you know, um, and dad that's enforcing things, not enforcing things, but encouraging them to do the right thing. Yeah, and um, let's just see where it goes. Um, Jason, so, yeah, they, they definitely I can swing around a little bit on bars and jump off and flip and all that sort of stuff. Stuff that I can only dream about. And before I finish, there's a couple of things I want to finish on. Is just tell us how they can follow you on hashtag United. Okay, Jason's we're having obviously we're having a few that last question? Technical. Yeah. What how do we follow you on hashtag United Women? Yeah. Intermittent. Um. Sorry. How do we um, how do we kind of um, how do we follow you on hashtag United? Okay, so I'll just say this hashtag United Women's FC. Follow them. They've just been taken over by a um, or taken over. They've just been partnered with um, one of the biggest names hashtag United, um, and they're going to do major major things. And just watch them go from one league to the other. What I wanted to do was uh, I, I wanted to end up on on Jason giving some tips to to young youngsters that are, are just going out and they're pushing and they're trying to get in the first team or they're trying to kind of and I know Jay just say keep on giving it your hundred percent keep on pushing keep on practicing keep on going and doing what you do um, and he would also say to the parents give them as much support and I know this because I've lived and breathed it with Jason um, he would look up and say back them up, support them, give them everything that they, they, they require, give them the strength to achieve whatever they want to do. And, and with your help, I know it makes 10 times more. Anyway, ladies and gents, I'm sorry about the, the problems from a technical perspective. I will get Jason back on the show. But for now, I'm thanking you for listening so much. It was a wonderful show, Jason. Absolutely amazing. I love you to pieces and you're one of my biggest inspirations. Everyone, I hope you enjoyed it this week. So until next week, bye for now.